Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I want to talk about a new feature that's appeared in Pro Tools 12.3, which is drag to commit MIDI. And what that means is you can drag MIDI instrument tracks, and you can drag them to audio tracks as long as they're the same width. And what we mean by width is if it's mono, it goes to mono or stereo, stereo, etc. And then it will make an audio version of that uh, almost instantly, depending on the length of the track and the complexity of what you're dragging across. Uh, but it's pretty fast. That's what we're going to do today, but we're going to do the dragging part of it. We'll look in another video about the commit function across the board. But what I want to show you today is it in action. I want to show you some tips. I want to show you some tricks. We're going to do another test as well. And that test is will it null? And uh, you'll see whether it nulls or not. And then I'll explain to you the, the reasons behind the results of the nulling test as well. So first, let me explain what this new function is. Let's, for example, let's play this track. We've put it down. Let's say I like that piano and I think, yeah, I'd like to, I, but now my process is going, hey, I, I can't cope anymore and I want to get this riff down. I can grab the MIDI in Pro Tools 12 verse 3 and drag it to an audio track and almost instantaneously it's bounced it into, into that place now. So what we have here is there's the original. And there's the audio. So you can see that's pretty handy. Then, of course, what you could then do, you could, depending on what your workflow is, you could then hide and make an active that. And we'll look at that in another video where we're using the actual commit function, which is here. I'm just talking about dragging in this generally and some of the things that will happen if you drag. Now, what you can't do in drag is that there's a snare up here playing the... I'm just going to undo what I did there. There's two drums here. There's the snare here playing. A snare part on boom. So we've got two tracks. And so what I can't do is grab this MIDI and drag that down because that won't work. It doesn't work like that. What I can do, though, is if I've got these two here and I grab this now and drag this down, you get that. Just. So that's what you can do with drag to commit. Now, a few things I suppose you're going to ask me, and the first big question is somebody asked me very quickly, as it's Avid and it's Pro Tools, is will it null? What we mean by null is if I grab this, for example, this drum part and drag it down. In fact, let's get the keyboard part because that's apples for apples. And we drag this down. What we mean by nulling is now, if that's been rendered at the same volume, uh, at exactly the same point to, in terms of sample accuracy, then if I put something like a trim plugin on here and phase reverse it, then what I should be able to do is null that out. So if we solo that and we solo that and we play it, and we take bypass off this, as you can see, there is silence, which means what we call nulling out. Now the question is, is everything phase accurate if you do this? Now the answer is no, it's not. It tends to depend on a number of things. It depends on, so that's the piano. Uh, if we get, for example, the bass, uh, the drum beat here, and we drag this across, and we play that at the same time as well. Turn that keyboard off. Uh, it's not nulling. Let's check a few things first. Let's first check that that's at zero dB suit. So we'll grab that and we'll try again. Great thing is as well you can overwrite just by simply dragging and dropping. So that's helping it now because we've now got them at the same volume and that's obviously going to have an effect on trying to null stuff. So why is it not working anymore? Well first of all got the snare up here as well so let's get that back in. So now we're nulling. But now and again depending on which instrument you use, you'll hear stuff 
coming through. So you'll hear that symbol creeping through. Does that mean it's not sample accurate? No, it's not about that. What it's about is a number of things. We chatted about this on the team quite considerably before we've even attempted to make this video. And a number of things to consider when you're using uh, virtual instruments. Uh, one of them is that many virtual instruments consist of what we call round robin sampling. And so the snare drum that hits, if it's true round robin, it won't just go round and round in a cycle. It won't go one, two, three, four of, of eight samples, for example. It might randomize those. So that's going to have an effect on it. The second thing that's going to have an effect as well is any modulation built in. Is the modulation clocked? If it's freeform, then it's going to be out of cycles with other stuff that you're freezing. So personally, I wouldn't get too bothered about the nulling part of this because, and of course, the second thing to think about as well is MIDI can drift. Uh, it can, it's not always rock solid. And so depending on what you use and, and depending on that, we've I've tried it with different things. So for example, if I get this bass part here, I'll drag that across. Let's see what that does and whether we get some nulling on that. Let's just grab the part. As you can see, that's not nulling. And that might have something to do with the kind of effects that are on it. So the question is, does it null? Well, that depends what you use. Different virtual instruments have different uh, results. Uh, I've tried it with Superior Drummer and other things as well. So as I say, trying to get it to null is kind of a pointless exercise almost, unless you're really bothered. But give me your view on that. I'm sure you will. That's the first thing. Now, there's a few things to bear in mind. If you go to Preferences within uh, Pro Tools here, there's a preference now in the processing down here in the commit which says rendered file bit depth, you always use 32-bit or follow session settings. Now that's an important thing to bear in mind. Let me explain why. If I, for example, uh, clipped it, so I'm going to show you this, I'm going to do two parts of this. What we're going to do first is I'm going to go back into the preferences, I'm going to use the follow session settings, and the setup on this, if we go to setup, is at 16-bit. So for example, if I then now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this up. I'm also going to add in Avid Trim. And I'm going to zap that up to 12 dB. Really start thrashing that up now. And there, and there. Let's really go for broke here, just to prove the point of why 32-bit processing is within this commit feature. So that now is ridiculously loud. I'm going to actually turn down my master fader. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this across to here. And what you'll end up with is flatlining, basically. Now let me show you something really interesting. If we go into Preferences again, and we tick that Always Use 32-bit, now it's going to render it at a 32-bit resolution. Why does that matter? For this reason, if we now listen to this audio, we'll turn the, get rid of the trim plugin, actually, no, we don't need that anymore because we've got through the discussion about, uh, let's just turn this up a bit. We'll listen to this one first. And we'll listen to this one. It's loud, but it ain't clipping. Why? Because we've used 32-bit rendering. So if we actually normalize that one, uh, using Audio Suite, let's just take it down a bit, let's take it down about there, render that, render this, same as well. Now what we have now, we just have a quite, quite a distortion, whereas what we have here is the audio, even though we clipped it in the same way, we're able to recover it, and that's why it's useful to have that function switched on in your preferences. So now we've got the trim back off that. Let's show you another cool feature. What you can do as well, and again, this is all about the dragging we're doing today. We can grab this, and we can pull it down like this. And now we have four instruments bounced in place, frozen, whatever you want to use, whatever term bothers you. Uh, <laughs> Now 
Now, the other thing to note as well is any effects have come across as well. So we've got H delay there and studio reverb in there. So let's undo that. Now, another cool feature talking about that, so we're going to take, let's say, this lead. I'm going to turn it on from the beginning just so we've got it and we can hear it throughout the track. And let's on. <laughs> can do as well which is quite nice is I could grab this let's just take these two parts grab that and now I've got the clean lead what you can also then do of course is you could come into the H delay we could whack that into wet mode on bypass it grab it and drag that so that's now the wet version of it there and we could come to Studio Reverb, we could turn that on as well. We could wet mode that as well. Remember the H delays before it, so you'd keep that, or you could turn it off altogether. It's entirely up to you. Drag that across as well. And so what we're, now we have is we have the original, the delayed version, and the reverb version. <laughs> Now one small tip as well is if you're going to do that kind of thing, what I would say, I'm just going to put this all back again, is I would consolidate the regions if you were going to do those kind of tricks with, with the dragging. For this reason, that if you don't do that, then basically it's, it's consolidated, it's, it's just committing that range. And if you've got things like reverb tails and delay going across those time points, then it's not going to render them as it should. So I'd press... Alt, Shift, and 3. That's now all one strip, and then do it that way. So that's the next tip. Another cool trick is if you've got a stereo instrument and you want to uh, commit by drag the parts individually, so solo outputs. So a little workaround I found is if I open Boom, for example, this is one that would be useful for that, and I press uh, Control, Alt, Command, and click this icon here, everything now is in automation mode. And if I then drop down here, come to my boom, and I go to kick solo, plus snare solo, plus rim, I uh, don't need rim, so I'm gonna make that uh, the closed hats, and I know I've also got the clap, Part. No jokes, please. Uh, British humour kicking in there, perhaps. And then also the ride. And what I could then do is I could come here. I could solo the kick. Solo the snare. Draw in the solo points. Now you might think this is a bit laborious, but if you're just working with a loop, it's quite a cool way of doing it. And we can grab the beat now, drag it down here. So I now have a, a bar of kick, a bar of snare, a bar of hat, a bar of clap, and a bar of the rim. Let's just uh, see that in action. Sometimes you'll get a bleed, so you might have to just move it slightly away from the start of the bar, but generally it works. Then all I do is just grab that, pull that there, grab that, pull that there, grab that, pull that there, grab that, pull that there. If we duplicate all of that now, we have got ourselves separate outputs of boom. Bosh, 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 bosh. So that's a handy little workaround if you want to get separate outputs from something that doesn't have them originally. Uh, so that really is everything you want to know about uh, drag MIDI to commit uh, and the other stuff and getting stuff bounced in place, frozen, whichever term you want to use. It's entirely up to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.